Eduardo Alves da Silva was born on the 25th of February 1983 in the Carioca district of Bangu, Rio de Janeiro. Raised in the 90s, he idolised Romario, the short Brazilian marksman who won the 1994 World Cup and helped evolve the role of the centre forward. As a short boy, he lacked the physical attributes of a typical striker and Eduardo was bypassed by the biggest national clubs. His options were reduced to his local club CBF New Kennedy and then Bangu Atletico, whose youth categories he joined as a teenager. Though he didn't often feature for the sides, he was approached by a scout from Croatian club Dynamo Zagreb, and given his hopeless pursuit of the likes of Palmeiras, Sao Paulo and Corinthians, the young striker concluded his youth career in Europe. Accustomed to the warm South American weather, he had a difficult time adapting to the oceanic climate and learning the mysterious language. The native of Sao Paulo decided to take up Croatian citizenship in 2002, meaning he wouldn't represent Brazil at international level. After making his senior debut in Croatia, he was loaned to second division side Inka Zaprisic in the winter of 2002, as he was deemed unready for the senior level by Dinamo. For the remainder of the season, Eduardo scored 10 goals in 15 games, proving his ability to find the back of the net regularly, which earned him a return to the capital. Dinamo offered him his first professional contract, which the 18-year-old promptly accepted. With boosted confidence, he embarked on a wonderful debut campaign as a regular in their first team. At 5'10", he wasn't a physical striker, but an elegant one with a fantastic touch, assured left foot, and dominant aerial presence. He quickly understood the Croatian game and thrived due to his movement off the ball and finishing ability, which helped him plunder nine goals in his first season, earning him the title Player of the Year in 2004. At this time, he received a call-up for Croatia at the age of 21, going on to perform well in the 2006 Carlsberg Cup and other friendlies when given the chance. However, head coach Zlatko Kranchar excluded the striker from his 2006 World Cup squad, believing he was too young, though he noted that Eduardo would one day be an important player for his nation. After two noteworthy seasons in Zagreb, Eduardo enjoyed some silverware, winning back-to-back -back league titles from 2005 to 2007, and the marksman was an integral part of their success, scoring 55 times in this period. Glances from top European scouts had come his way off the back of these domestic triumphs, but it was during a 2006 Champions League qualifier when the number 24 impressed a man who had a reputation for developing promising talents. At Arsenal's Emirates, Eduardo stood out to Arsene Wenger, having skillfully converted Dynamo's sole goal in their 5-1 loss across the legs. And here comes Eduardo. Scores. The Frenchman stated that he instantly knew the Zagreb forward was special, and that his ability to adapt to a new league, so different to what he was familiar with, was an indicator that Eduardo could come to England and flourish in a similar way. In the wake of their disappointing World Cup run, Slaven Bilic was appointed Croatia's head coach and opted for the informed forward as his main man up top throughout their Euro 2008 qualifying campaign. His decision was rewarded by Eduardo, who scored 10 times in their 12 games helping his nation steal a place in the tournament from England, who failed to qualify for the first time in 24 years. He intensified the hype around his name with an astounding 2006-07 campaign, in which he netted 39 goals in 38 matches and broke Goran Vlaovic's 10-year goalscoring record. In the final game of the season, Eduardo captained the side to their 3-0 demolition of rivals Hajduk's split bagging all the game's goals to secure his second hat-trick that year. Burdened with the job of finding replacements for the Invincibles, Wenger was now fully convinced that Eduardo was the perfect man to lead his attack, and in July 2007, Arsenal made it official. The club handed him the number 9, and he made his Premier League debut in mid-August, and found the back of the net by the end of the month in a Champions League qualifier. With Robin van Persie and Emmanuel Adibayor featuring consistently on the score sheet, the Croatians struggled for playing time 
and the initial four months of his tenure in North London was difficult. The physicality of the English game was new and daunting, and the delicate striker failed to score in the nine league games he played before Christmas. Outside the first division, the striker managed two braces in the Carling Cup against Sheffield and Burnley, proving that he had more to offer than his first few months had suggested. Eduardo's in here, lovely ball from Gibbs, and he doesn't miss, does he? A few days before the new year, Everton led the Gunners 1-0 before Eduardo took the game by the scruff of the neck and scored his first two Premiership goals in an 11-minute spell, guiding Arsenal to a 4-1 victory in Merseyside. With another goal on New Year's Day against West Ham, the fans fell for the Croatian, christening him the saviour of the club, while Arsene Wenger believed he could become their match winner. By February, the Londoners topped the table with a five-point cushion above Manchester United and were favourites for their first league title in four years. Having conceded just one loss all season, the Gunners confidently travelled to the north to face Birmingham City at St Andrews, who sat at the opposite end of the table in the relegation zone. In this game, two days before his 25th birthday, Eduardo received a pass in the third minute before a reckless, studs-up challenge by Martin Taylor came flying at his left foot. The contact left the number 9 motionless on the floor, while players appealed to Mike Dean, who after showing a red to the Birmingham offender, realised the severity of the Croatian's injury. Eduardo's tibia and fibula had fractured instantly, and the smashed bones ruptured the tissue of the leg, known as a double compound fracture. Additionally, the force from Taylor on his standing foot caused an open dislocation of the ankle. Broadcasters such as Sky and BBC were strictly told to avoid showing any images of the damage as they were too graphic. I'm told the injury is so disturbing, we cannot show pictures of it. Almost eight minutes after the foul was committed, the striker was stretched off and immediately sent to the nearby Selly Oak Hospital for treatment while his teammates looked away in both horror and disgust. Scarred and dejected by what they had just seen, the Londoners threw their lead, having conceded a clumsy 95th minute penalty and dropping two points to the 10 men of Birmingham. Their despair had compounded, leaving a hopeless feeling in Arsenal hearts, which they would become accustomed to in the final quarter of the season. When asked about Eduardo, Wenger bluntly stated that more than just his season was over. The season is over for him and uh, his injury is very, very bad. You say the season is over, I hope it isn't the case, more, more but is this a career-threatening injury? More than the season is over. And the Frenchman heavily criticised Mark Taylor. But the tackle was horrendous and uh, this guy should never play football again. With explicit pictures of the injury released and news that the Croatian could be out for over 12 months, supporters were outraged with Taylor and the Englishman received waves of death threats and hate mail. The league leaders endured three back-to-back -back draws with Aston Villa, Wigan and Middlesbrough before losing to Man U and Chelsea, which plunged them to third by April. They failed to reclaim the top spot by May and gifted the Reds their 10th Premier League title. The disastrous drop of form directly resulted from their visit to Birmingham and Wenger later admitted that the calamity of St Andrews had created some unrest in the team. Ruled out of Euro 2008, Eduardo was shown support by Croatian fans in Vienna and by Bilic, who dedicated their victory in their opening game to him. The surgeon who performed the operation, Dr Khalid Balok, remarked that Eduardo is lucky to still have his left leg, as the risk of infection was very high given the exposed bone and open wound. A metal plate with pins were inserted to hold the bones together, and he faced three months on crutches. Following his surgery, the Arsenal forward temporarily returned to his hometown so that he could surround himself by friends and family during his recuperation, which lasted 11 months. He returned to London with the right attitude, but there were doubts of his physical recovery. With metalwork implanted in his leg, Eduardo was slower and noticeably less mobile in training, raising concerns over whether he would be a liability to the team if played. The Croats' return to a football pitch came on the 16th of February 2009 in an FA Cup fourth round match versus Cardiff City, and within 20 minutes of his comeback, 
he nodded in Carlos Vela's cross to steal the lead. After converting his second from six yards, he celebrated by kissing his wedding ring, signifying gratitude to his wife for supporting him through his long healing process. It was an emotional day for he and the fans, who, at the time of his injury, considered Eduardo's Arsenal career dead. It was clear by the next round in the cup that the 26-year-old hadn't lost the quality, bagging one of his best goals yet in the red shirt against Burnley. How dare you be that good? Yet, something was missing. Wenger didn't field him at all in the Premier League until the 2009-10 season, during which Eduardo was given 24 matches to reprove his worth, and only managed two league goals. Injuries to his thigh, Achilles tendon and hamstring had interrupted his year, and he struggled to find his footing as the summer transfer window imminently approached. Wenger realised that Eduardo wasn't going to fulfil the main attacking role as he had hoped, and signed fellow French forward Marouane Chamac in May. This transfer marked the beginning of the end for the number 9's time in England, as Shakhtar Donetsk bought the marksman in July. In Ukraine, he found the level where he could prosper, accumulating 58 goals across six seasons and lifting four league titles. As a result of his success in Donetsk, Eduardo also managed to somewhat revive its international career, selected for the 2010 and 2014 World Cups, as well as the Euros in 2012, though Croatia couldn't escape the group stage in any of the tournaments. Subsequent to their shortcomings in Brazil, Eduardo retired from international duty in July 2014. In 10 years, the number 22 had made 62 appearances for his country, scoring 29 goals, which made him Croatia's third most prolific striker on record. <laughs> Winding down towards full retirement, Eduardo signed for hometown side Flamengo, and he concluded his playing career in Warsaw as Legia striker in 2018, at the age of 35. Eduardo's story is one to be looked at with sympathy. A young player with experience, leading the lines of his national side and under the guidance of an esteemed manager in the greatest league in the world. As the best finisher Arsenal had seen in years, he represented a development of the club to move on positively from the most decorated period ever. One moment during a great individual spell killed Eduardo's English career and caused the Gunners to drop down the table and forfeit their best chance at the title since the Invincibles. At 25, the Croatian was building towards his prime and adjusting well to a difficult division. But after the injury, the man who returned from Birmingham was never the same player. A promising player in his pomp, Eduardo is a reminder of the dangers of football and how one simply misjudged challenge can impact an entire career.